Oh my dear, what a weather, what a morning. Hello friends, my name is Gerhard Ochsenfeld. I'm back with a new video for you. Last day of April, white frost on the ground, completely cloudless sky and the sun rising and offering a hint of warmth. A great morning. So I went out with my backpacker, 15 kilograms in total, took along nearly every possibility but did at last not use a half of it. It's spring. Those who are not able to come along with the spring are a kind of memorial to the transitoriness of life. However, let's enjoy the life, let's enjoy the spring. And springtime as well is macro time. While it is not the nature as a great and big unit that becomes green and colored, but it are the thousands of millions of blooms and blossoms of buds in the bushes and trees that shoot up with the sun. It are these many little and fine structures, it is the growth in detail that completes to those great impressions. Let us have a look at the Canon EFS 60mm f2.8 USM Micro, a lens made specially and only for Canon's APS-C cameras. You can use other lenses adding an extension tube, however it is comfortable to go up to a scale of 1 to 1 without mounting extension tubes. And I am now interested in the picture quality of the results. So first. Let me see what is possible when using Euro lenses with only an extension tube of 12 mm. EF 100 mm f2.0 USM, EF 50 mm f1.4 USM, and EF 35 mm f2.0 IS USM. The challenge is not too hard while using an aperture of f6.3 for any of these lenses at their shortest focal distances adding the extension tube EF 12mm Mark II. First, both the EF 50mm and EF 35mm are by far not so bulgy as I feared for a so short focal distance. Second, I want to compare a hundred percent details from the center and from one of the corners. The result of my standard lens EF 35mm F 2.0 seems to be really good. Let us compare step by step. In the center the EF 35mm is brilliant, the EF 50mm does its job, the EF 100mm does simply disappoint. In the corners, however, any of these lenses is not what we go for when using a DSLR camera. For many uses the edges won't be relevant, but the distance between lens and object is very low just for the best of these lenses, the EF 35mm f2.0 with EF 12mm extension tube. All this gives us good reasons to check the specialized macro lens EFS 60mm f2.8 macro, a lens made in Taiwan. For any of my test shots, be aware that I use cameras with 17.9 megapixel of resolution. Any of 100% details I present are fitted to 1280 to 720 pixel. When I was talking about preparing a review about my macro lens, I was given the opportunity in privacy to compare with its bigger brother, the EF 100mm f2.8 USM macro. I took only a little time to check this lens. But I was interested in if Canon themselves go for their macro lens seriously while it is only made for APS-C cameras. Are these two lenses two stars in the universe? Or is the little brother only a plaything for the kindergarten? So let us have a journey to the Antarctica, only imagining with a finger on the map, with the macro lenses held up to the map. While 60mm are a full frame equivalent of 96mm, these lenses are something like similar. 
maybe because of the equivalent of 160 mm when using the EF 100 mm macro with an APS-C camera there are reasons for you to take the advantage of the longer focal distances. However, are there more reasons to choose the bigger lens while the prices do not differ too much? First, at a scale of 1 to 3, I want to compare these two macro lenses. I'm glad to find both lenses similar in sharpness at f5.6 and f8. I'm a bit of disappointed to find the 100mm macro stronger in the corners. I'm really disappointed about the clearly strong loss of quality at apertures of f16 and f22. For a macro lens, these apertures are often necessary and the 100mm macro manages them not too bad. Let me show you an example that makes me happy at an aperture of f18, while depth of field is otherwise too low. Back to the Antarctica. I want to compare the two macro lenses at a scale of 1 to 1. Taking a look at the center, both lenses are best at f5.6. f4 and f8 don't really offer a difference. Nice to see both lenses are at the same level. Even the EFS 60mm macro seems not to be weak at an open aperture of f2.8. In the corners, however, the 60mm macro decreases clearly more than the EF 100mm macro. That will be a good reason to check the EFS 60mm macro in detail. With a focal distance of 22.5 cm, I reached a scale of nearly 1 to 1 when reproducing a book print with black color only. At the edge of the frame, the results are disappointing but usable between apertures of f4 and f7.1. At the edge of the inner circle, the results become acceptable at apertures from 3.5 up to 5.6 or so. In the middle of the exposures, however, results are great at apertures from 4.5 up to 7.1 and really good at f3.5, f4.0 and f8. f3.2 and f9 are still good. f2.8 is not as well as it seemed within my first check, but is really usable. I think We've had enough of bare and dry comparisons now. We have seen the abilities and limits of the EFS 60mm macro when using it as it should be used, as a macro lens. Do you like to enjoy some impressions of the spring to conclude the video? So now. good in distances of some meters up to infinity. My summary, however, for macro use. If you want to have a macro lens for many different uses and do not mostly photograph maybe insects so that you need the bigger focal distances of 100 or 180 millimeters of focal length often and indispensably, then this 60 millimeter lens is just the right tool for your APS-C camera frame equivalent of nearly 100 mm, it is a very good all-rounder for many different uses, not only to enjoy the nature, but maybe for technical requirements. Or for reproductions. At a scale of 1 to 1, the lens is free of bulgy distortion, sharpness is still a good compromise up to the corners of the frame, the lens is free of chromatic aberrations in the middle and nearly free of CAs at the edges. Thank you for watching and goodbye.